Hello there, congratulations and welcome to the 6th week of this bootcamp. 5 dominoes out of 7 have already fallen and the 5th one is about to fall the 6th one and the 6th one will finally the 7th. And the skills you gain from this bootcamp will continuously fall other dominoes ahead in your Flutter app development career. This process is unstoppable where consistency is the key. As it's well said, there is no such a reality doing something for nothing. Where we decide to put our energy decides what we will ultimately accomplish. So that's it for the motivation. Now let's get back to the main motive of this week 6. So in this week 6, we are going to build another big project that would be Google Map Clone. It is going to include a lot of features and we will build it following clean architecture principles. So if you don't know anything about clean architecture and you want to learn and understand how we can build large applications in Flutter using clean architecture, check out this 12 hours video of building WhatsApp clone with clean architecture, which is from the week four and week five from the same Flutter and Firebase bootcamp. Anyways, now let's take a quick recap of the clean architecture. So I assume that you already know we will be interacting with our app with the outermost layer, which is presentation layer. And suppose a button is clicked, the call flow goes from widgets to the presentation logic holders such as block, qubit, etc. And from there, they depend upon the use cases. So a specific use case, for example, send message utilizes entities in that case, the message entity to send a message and that use case depends upon the contract repository to do that specific job. Again, in that case, the send message. So till now, the call flow came from presentation to the domain layer, which clearly shows up that the presentation layer depends upon the domain layer. And then that repository is implemented in the data layer. So here, this again shows up the data layer also depends upon the domain layer for the repository by following the dependency inversion principle. So if you don't know what is the dependency inversion principle, I already have created a detailed videos on the solid principles. The dependency inversion is the last principle of the solid and the solid is the design principles of software development. So again, the data layer also depends upon the domain layer for the repository by following the dependency inversion principle and then that send message method in the repository implementation works with remote data source and this remote data source now utilizes the models for the necessary conversions and lastly the actual logic is triggered in the data source and the action is performed. And and how all that flow is connected up, you guessed it right, the dependency injection, a very important file in our project which connects up all the flow from presentation layer on click gesture to the remote data source implementation to perform that specific task and maintaining the clean structure of the app. Now let's get into the code. So before going forward with setting up project structure, let's take a quick look at the demo of the application that what we are going to build throughout this week 6. So the Google Map clone that you can see on the emulator running, we are going to build that application in that week 6. First of all, let's check the tracking location of the current user. So when I move the map like that and then click this my location, so this will track my current location, but currently it's not in the stream. And to make it in stream, we have to change only one thing. We are using geolocator to track the current user location so it provide us two methods one get current position and other get current position stream so all we have to do is to change the get current position to get current position stream and instead of doing then we have to do listen to the changes in the response of the stream of the location so that way it will give us a stream location and we will deal it in the google map clone that we will be building when you go forward in it so for now that is just tracking the current location like that and that's how it's going to work now before exploring other features in that explore page let's see the other design of the pages that we have in our google map clone so in the go tab we are going to have the page like this we have the same google map but only difference is the places disappears and a different sliding up panel appears from the bottom so the sliding up panels works the way when i drag it and move it up here and this attached with the above window and the search bar becomes outline and now it's no more with the shadow as it's now like that you can see and also for the buttons here the track current location and the drawing polylines it also disappears 
it's here the condition check you can see it will appear now like that and currently we don't had the behavior now currently we have in the sliding up panel like it will only stuck in here when you just show it up but it won't go directly here to the bottom to have this functionality i just make the changes in that specific package to have the behavior like this like the real google map clone and here i have in the lib in the core i just directly copy all the code from that package and just store it in my project and made the changes that i wanted so what i have to do to give it the default behavior i have to just set the boolean flag to true or false to have the default behavior and the one that i just give it to this sliding up panel like when i come here to the explore and come back to the go so it was not a default behavior to move it down like that but i add this behavior in this sliding up panel and yes we will also fork that sliding up panel repository and we'll make the changes and we'll create a pull request in that repository so that was the go page here we mostly do nothing but that's just a simple design all the main functionality is within the explorer page and we will come back to this once we check out all the pages so in the third page we have nothing but simple design which is not functional and yes you can store the sap classes what you have to do is simple CRUD operations. You can use Firebase or any other local database to store these sad places. So when you click the save, so a document will be created in the bookmarks or you can also name your collection saved. So the document will be created in here and you can simply differentiate it using the type and best on their types like favorites, want to go and start. You can load them in the different pages of the favorites want to go in the start places it's pretty simple functionality if you want to add also and in the contribute it's also a simple design here and it's doing nothing and the updates is also design so that was the simple pages now let's get back to the explore so we tested the tracking the current location and now it's time to load the nearby places so let's do it like this for now once if the current location is working yes it's working and now let's load the restaurant around this current position so if i do click this it will show up circular progress indicator and after some time when i receive the response you can see the bottom navigation disappear and i got the nearby places around my location here is my current location and when I swipe this carousel, I will be navigated to or the camera will be animated to the specific place marker like this. And that's how it works. Now let's try to draw polyline to the specific place here. I will select this and draw the polyline and it will now. You can see it draw the polyline here. The distance from my current location here is my current location. From here, you have to follow this road to come here. And when you click a place here, it will also become in this lighting up panel like this. You can close it like that back. And once you click this cancel, everything will disappear. Now click this back. It will navigate me here to my current location so that's how the nearby places is working that's how you can track your current location and that's how you can draw polylines in the google map clone and that's all we will be doing and now two more things that are remaining is the drop pin functionality so when you click anywhere in the google map for example i click here in the this place so it navigates the camera in here drop pin it gets the city name and the country name and got me the direction button here now if i want to draw the polylines here i will click this simply and it will draw the polylines to the specific place that i selected or drop the pin where you can see it draw the polyline from my current location to the specific place and now you can see in the search we also got the latitude and longitude of that specific place where i dropped the pin you can cancel it and you can drop 
been somewhere else like this and you can close like that so that's how the drop in functionality is now let's go back for the search when you click this and let's say i want to search for let's say abc let's see what appears and submit it will show up a circular progress indicator and different places are appears using the places api and when i click one it will navigate me directly in here and will mark that i can click this it will appear the sliding up panel like that and it's working the same when i click this cancel it will disappear i can track my location back like that so that was the functionality that we will be achieving in this google map clone nearby places get current user location drawing polylines drop pin and also the search and also building that full ui of the google map clone and also the sliding up panel functionality we will try to fork that package that repository sorry and then we will create a pull request in there like this functionality can also be here that we achieved in the google map clone so currently it was not here in the sliding up panel so i wanted it to be work as real google map clone so i added my own functionality by just following the two boolean flags to have the functionality that i wanted and if you make it false so it will work as default as it's working with the sliding up panel default functionality so that is what we will build in this week six so first thing first you have to create your flutter project and then you have to go to the pubspec.yml file to add the necessary dependencies in our project so that we will be using them in our google map clone application so inside the dependencies here we will add these dependencies and these the dev dependencies and this build value generator and the build runner will be required for generating the models for the complex google api since we will be integrating the google apis also in our google map clone so that's why the generator package is also here and then the flare polyline points to draw the polylines the carousel to get the carousel for the places the get it a service locator for dependency injection http for sending requests and the collection to use the immutable collections from that package and the built value to work with the generated models for the google apis and then equitable for the value equality we will be using it with the flutter blog and the geocoding for converting the for converting the latitude and longitude coordinates to some specific place and the geolocator to get the location and the google maps flutter to display a map in android and ios application a toast and the fun awesome flutter to use the icons of the fun awesome and the flutter.env so that i can keep my google api secretly and then ignore it in this git ignore file to prevent the request from other users so what is an google api and how you can get this google api and how this is going to be used it will become clear to you as you go forward in our google map clone project so after we have added the dependencies in our project you have to do pubgit to get these dependencies and then we will go for the further steps so once it completes now we will create the directories inside the lib inside the lib first we will create the directory for features since we'll be following the clean architecture so we will have to separate things as much as possible so inside the feature we are going to have a directory that would be the app the app feature where the core data will be stored of our google map clone inside the app feature i'm gonna have the constant global home splash theme and the utils these are very simple directories that will be inside our app feature so the const is holding a dart file nearby places const so that we can show these places as you can see on the screen and when they are clicked based on their specific types like the groceries atms and the coffee we will send requests on the places api and will load the nearby places around the current position of the user so that will be used for that purpose and here it stores the simple names in the string data type and also here nearby places icon constant which simply store the icons and that's it for the restaurant hotel local gas station and shopping basket outline and that's all inside the global we have for now a toast widget 
which is a very simple toast in our Google Map clone. And then inside the home, we have a very simple statful widget. Let's make it statless since we don't have anything in the stat. A very simple statless widget of home, which is returning nothing but the home page for now. And yes, we'll go forward and design the home page also. And then we have a splice screen, a very simple splice screen, taking a child as a parameter in the constructor and in the init stat. After two seconds, we are checking if it's mounted. We do navigator push remove until to the child, which means that only for two seconds, the splash screen will show up and then we will navigate to the child page where when you call the splash screen and whatever page we call in this child. So we will be navigated here as simple as that. Inside the build method, a scaffold is returned with the splash background color and the background color is coming from again the same theme and the style dart as we had in our whatsapp clone and here you can see we have all the colors that we will be using in our google map clone in the splash screen what we have here a column a space between so that the widgets inside the column will align based on the space between which means that one widget will align at the top, one at the middle, and one at the bottom most. So this container means we want to align the app logo in the middle and that's why you put one empty container widget in here and this icon of the Google transparent logo will be aligned at the bottom and we don't have anything inside the assets image and yes we are going to add the assets also. So that's just for showing you that display screen a simple very simple splice screen inside which is aligning everything in the column and that's it now let's go and add the assets here the assets inside the assets we are going to have the images and also the file for env that is env directory inside that we are going to have the dot env here I will store my IP and then I will ignore that in the git ignore to not allow it to push to the github because it's private you also have to keep your google api secret in your project because it's not something that you allow to use publicly because this is something you get when you pay 200 to 300 dollars to the google cloud platform so you have to keep it secret also and now i'm gonna store my google api in here and then i will load it in the main.dart and i'll be using it from here and will ignore it as i said in the git ignore and to get that api within the google cloud console of your project you need to go to the google maps platform and there you need to create an api key for your project where billing is enabled for the google cloud platform and that's it they will give you the api as you can see on the screen the api will look something like this and then you can store it so that's how you can store your api key within your dot env file so after having this api now i'm gonna have some images for my google map clone so after having these images in my assets images i'm gonna go in the perspective.yml file and here i'm gonna uncomment these assets We'll move them one space back also for this one and this one and here we are going to put the assets slash images and also the assets slash the env to access the path to both of the directories so that we can access it in our code once we have this we have to propagate and then we have to go and simply create the other features inside our google map clone inside the features we're gonna have the explore feature so this is going to include the remote data sources models and all of that stuff so we have to generate it using the clean architecture generator this is basically a package you can download it from the plugins of the android studio if you're using android studio and if you're using vs code you can also download its extension from here also so the feature name would be explore and i don't want to split the data sources this time okay and we got the explore with the directories data domain and presentation and that's what i wanted for now and the other features 
is not going to contain the data and the domain because that would be the only design and all that api integration work will be inside the explore so what we're going to do now we're going to have these features also inside our google map clone the contribute which contains for now only the presentation layer with the pages and the widgets directory and the save also the research and also the update so this is going to hold only the ui stuff and all of the backend stuff and the complicated feature will be this explore feature everything will become clear to you when you go forward for building the ui and then integrating the google maps in our application and also dealing with the getting the user location in the stream drawing polylines api integration and all of that stuff so that's it now now last but not least thing that we have to do is to go to the android app inside the source main and inside the android manifest file we have to add one thing to make it work to deal with the google maps in our flutter application so after you have added dependencies in your pubspec.yml file you have to add some metadata information in your android also so here you have to do add a metadata tag with the com.google.android.uapi and the value will be your api in here the same api that we added inside the env and yes this android and ios file will also be ignored to be uploaded to the github because we are also storing the api in here and if you are working with some production application you also have to keep ignoring these files because this is not something you can just publish publicly in your github you have to keep it secret so next thing you have to do with android you have to add the permissions for the google map to access the location so the permissions that are required to work with google map to access the location from foreground and background and all of that stuff you have to add these five permissions inside the and write manifest file about this application tag and then for the ios let's close this assets and ios you have to go to the runner and the app delegate swift inside that you have to import the google maps like this and then inside that body you have to do provide the api key with the google map services like that and with that you have to now open this ios in the xcode module and then you have to add the permissions for the ios also once your xcode is opened you have to go to the info and simply open it as source code and down here after this true inside the dictionary add these permissions and that's it this one is for accessing the photo library of the device and the others are for the google map for background and foreground and all of that stuff so once you have this you can simply close your xcode so after the permissions is also added for the ios in the xcode you have to do one last thing the inside the main.dart we have a dummy app in here so here what you have to do before calling the my app you have to load from the dot env we have to load the from the assets env the env file so that we can use it in our application in different pages since it's loaded before running the app and inside that the material app we have the title of google map clone and then the material design is true and the color scheme is taken from the blue accent which is going to be the primary color of our google map and then you're calling the display screen so it will show up for two seconds and then the google map clone home page will be returned so once we have this we can simply run our emulator from here pixel api 34 and when it's connecting now to the emulator and once the avd is started then we will run our application here to test it if everything is working or not and in the next video with that we will go for starting building the ui of our google map clone so the pixel is starting now and now it's going to be connected with the internet and yes it did uh, make it fast now okay it's done now let's run this application and i think this is going to be crashed 
and will require the minimum SDK version to be increased. So before this happens, we can simply ourselves stop the mandar dart and go to the Android app build cradle here we need to increase the mini stk version to let's say 22 and then the multi text enabled will be true once we have this we can safely run our application again now it's launching the lib mandar dart on the sdk gp geophone 64 arm 64 in the debug mode and running the gradle task assemble debug so now let's wait for it until it launches the application on the device then we will test it what happens so after the running gradle task assemble completes it comes up with a new stack of exception and here it's a long stack saying saying something about the jettified kotlin std lib and down here it's saying a flutter fix your project requires a new version so when you click this this will take you here to the kotlin dot kotlin language dot org and for the android studio giraffe and hedgehog you have to put the this latest version for the Kotlin in your build cradle. So where we have to put inside the Android build cradle. So inside the Android app here, the Kotlin version is this. So we have to make it 1.9.10, then run it. So after updating the Kotlin version and running back the application, you can see everything works fine. The geolocator services has been connected up and there is no stack exception and we got the home page let's hard restart the application once again to see the splice screen again and yes as a splice screen and that's the home page in the next video we'll go for the further steps of the ui that's it for this video if you found this video helpful thumbs up a like and subscribe for daily updates that's it see you in the next one